Trash Talk, my fans. Going back to my TV reruns. This time we're going to watch Facts of Life. Ran for nine seasons. Got a whole box set here from Shout Factory. I think it's Shout. Yeah. So anyway, let's check out season one, shall we? Let's watch. Episode one, Rough Housing. Besides my two boys, I've never seen a Harvest Fair. Never been to a Harvest Fair? Willis, how did you know? The entire different awesome. strokes cast you shows up in this episode. Your mother You wouldn't pull my leg, would you? Why not? You could use a few inches. Arnold and Tootie we see for the first time. And here we see a young Molly Ringwald. We are women, okay, Mr. Bradley? Sorry, Molly. You're forgetting. You're a woman. Some of you are about to burgeon. There's Natalie for the first birth. time. I thought all of us were virgin. <laughs> Can we stay later? I love you. Blair, are you strange? Blair being a bitch? I didn't mean anything. I'll just bet. You better think about what she means. I'm not caring about boys. Mrs. Garrett, Cindy's going to compete against Blair for maybe Harvest Blair Queen. Is right. Maybe I'm not normal. But they say if you're advertising, you must be selling. <laughs> I'm not that kind of girl. You can ask any guy I dated. I'm a tease. <laughs> I apologize. I, I was really rotten. Because someone who could admit they're rotten really isn't. At this point, Mrs. Garrett is oh, Mrs. Garrett, going to come back. About it. Please, won't you come back? Yes, I will. Just as soon as they find a decent replacement for me here. In the meantime, I promise to send you a... Greg winked at me. He what? Blair won. Cindy came in second place, runner-up. Episode 2, Like Mother, Like Daughter. It's parents' night. Hey, the place does look great. A French cafe was a terrific theme for parents' night. Yeah, the old duck looks pretty many feet. Mom. Blair's mother. woman I ever met. Oh, What do you have to do to look the way you look? Well, I get plenty of sleep. Blair's mom is a bit of a flirt. This is an old boyfriend of hers, who also has a daughter going here. That guy was married, though. Then who was that I just saw kissing Mr. Branch in the garden? Well, if we're lucky, maybe it's Mrs. Branch with very long lips. And after drinks? It's a long dessert. Come on. She's not married, but uh, Blair knows that the man is. Of course, the well, two make up. The time that I started acting a little bit more like you than you like me. <laughs> you haven't cooked in years. You should have seen her. She's fantastic. This is episode three, the return of Mr. Garrett. Hello, I'm Robert Garrett. Mr. That is husband. Mr. Garrett. X. Wow, an X-rated husband. <laughs> Because every time you come around, it's to borrow money to pay off a gambling debt. <laughs> Honey, that's all changed. Why, with my new job, I won't even be able to touch a deck of cards. I'm going to be reservations manager in the new hotel in Atlantic City. I'm home to you every night. I'll keep it. Will you marry me? Again? <laughs> well, it's taking you a long time to answer. More hockey After he me? teaches all the kids how to play poker, the next thing you know, okay, they're all I taking guess. money out of their savings. No, no, wait, wait a minute, Cindy. On Monday, you drew out money for a hockey stick. On Tuesday, for skates. Now, what's this $20 for? Ice. I don't know. Sure enough, they're all card sharks now. <laughs> Three queens. You should go out. Tootie's pretty much cleaning up. So what are you going to do now? That's right. Making money out of it was my idea. 
That's the American way. <laughs> Do you realize what's happened here? Yes. I was going to say yes to you. You can still say yes. Look, it, it, it's all different now. Come on, Edna, take a chance. Yeah, Mrs. Garrett, go for it. You better think before you go for it, Mrs. Garrett. We were listening. Of course she turned him down. Mrs. Garrett, did you kick him out? She couldn't. She loves him. Well, girls, you're both right. I love him, and I kicked him out. This is episode four, IQ. Mr. Bradley accidentally dropped the IQ tests. IQ scores for everybody in school. Tootie found them all. Sure didn't know she was the smartest. The other things going. Tootie, of course, tells everybody. You're right, Blair. It's not too easy. Oh, congratulations, Nancy, on being so smart. Nancy has the highest IQ. Sue Ann has the lowest. It's easy for you to say, Sue Ann, don't be upset because you're the dumbest girl in school. Beautifully on your exams. This IQ thing, there's nothing to it. Doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't if you're at the top of the list like Nancy. And I don't care her complaining. You help me talk some sense into her. Sue Ann wants to leave school now. I'm going to leave Eastland too. To prove a point Ready. that IQ tests mean nothing, Ready. Ready. Mrs. Ten, Garrett decides to challenge ten, Mr. Bradley. Gold, rifle, paper. Mr. Bradley gets frustrated. You see, girls, I hope you were really listening. You can't live life by the numbers, and that's all an IQ really is. I have the girls to decide to stay. Episode 5, Overachieving. It's going to be clear day at Eastland. Family, will you hurry up? I got to look good for Daddy. Well, what's the rush, career? He doesn't like Mrs. Garrett. Another superficial one. Tootie's dad. I want it stopped. So I would appreciate it. If you would tell Mrs. Garrett to stay away from my daughter. He's got to tell her. Yes, there is. Who he wants to stay away from, Tootie. Your essay, entitled, My Future in Fingernail. But that essay uh, Please, not... Mrs. Garrett, I've made up my mind. After my career day talk, I'm taking Tootie out of Eastland. Girls. Tootie's dad is a lawyer, and they decide to present a case. Blair? Mr. Ramsey, isn't it illegal to yank a child out of school against her will? He thinks she'll do better at a different that. school. Uh-oh. <laughs> now, up until now, I've been rather intimidated by what you've accomplished. Well, we've accomplished a lot here at Eastland, too. This is not a school for rich, spoiled girls. <laughs> Why is everybody looking at me? I can promise you she'll end up with a career she loves. Eventually she weakens him. Let us help her with her first And he agrees to let Tootie stay. Please. Let her stay. <laughs> Episode 6, Emily Dickinson. Blair hasn't written her poem yet, due tomorrow. So she's gonna steal one from Emily Dickinson. Lines, you know, to give the Blair touch. Blair, you don't have to be quiet. He gives out the grades. A plus. Because she did so well, she raised the curve for everybody else. D minus. Molly, D. See, you're learning already. <laughs> and you help you learn even more, you'll all do a poem a second time. Except, of course, Blair. Oh, Mr. Bradley, my poem wasn't that great. Important thing, I couldn't keep your talent a secret. I've entered your poem in the New York State Poetry Festival. You, you, you didn't. <laughs> of course, she comes clean eventually. Beautiful. Mm. 
Well, how are you feeling right now? In here. Rotten. I copied that poem from Emily Dickinson. Emily Dickinson? Blair, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I didn't mean it. <laughs> yes, I did. Sequences. And you are grounded for a month. And of course, you just flunked English Lit. Flunked? Boy, Blair, that's really rough. Episode 7, Dieting. Blair found a date for Sue Ann. Or the chubby joke. Every girl I've ever seen Scott with looks like she's right out of vogue. So all the girls start dieting, and so does Mrs. Garrett. That's some idea. Oh, that settles it. I'm going on a diet. That dress goes back. But you love that dress. I don't know. Beats me. He wants them to stop dieting. We're going to have to go on record. The silly dieting has got to stop. Oh, I see the problem. So Ann even passes out. Stop kidding. Hasn't been eating enough. Oh, it's what's inside that makes you attractive. That's a lie, Mr. Bradley. If that's true, how can you never see a fat toe in a pantyhose or jeans commercial? And you don't think of a girl as a ten if she weighs a ton. That's my rice pudding. Forget it, Mrs. Garrett. Swan won't eat anything. Sure, eat my rice pudding. It's all my fault. I'm the one that got her on that diet in the first place, and... And all that pressure with Scott and beautiful about myself. She eventually convinces them right now. to stop. I'm a glorious 14. <laughs> and Steve, the actor Greg Bradford, star of the movie Let's Do It. Be seen on my channel soon. He's kind of seeing Blair a little bit. Hi, Blair. She's oh, going to be teaching Brad. sex ed. You're still having trouble with my teaching sex education. Well, you know I'm a registered nurse. I took courses. No, 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 no. Your qualifications are fine. But I personally think the board was wrong when it voted to teach sex education. When do I cave in? Cave <laughs> in? Yeah, surrender. Stop saying no. Kiss my innocence goodbye. <laughs> So that my date with Steve Saturday night. If I don't get in before curfew, will you sign me in? Sure. Hey, is Steve taking you somewhere romantic? I Can't we just have a little fun together? That's all you want? Is fun? Let's fine with me. Steve! Blair was the one making the moves it. here. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Is Steve this, this delivery guy that struts in here thinking every girl's in love with him? We are. <laughs> Steve and Blair actually got caught by the police. Nothing happened, though. They didn't do anything. Not all of them. Steve wanted to do the right thing, but then when I didn't want to, he tried to do the wrong thing. Got mad and raced off. Boy, am I lucky. This is episode 9. Flash Flood. It's raining hard and it's flooding everywhere. There's a stable with a horse and some rabbits in it that they're going to go rescue. It was the time to be furious. I just got to figure out a way to get us all out of here. We can't. We're trapped. How can Blair come down? The bridge just washed down. The water's getting higher. Blair. We're going to drown. Are you going to slap her like they do in the movies? She develops a crush <laughs> on Mr. Bradley. Boy, you must really be hard up for good grades. <laughs> If we don't make it, he gets them both back, but he breaks his ankle in the process. Well, here's a chance for the girls to prove it. Right, right. Because I'm afraid you've got a broken ankle. Well, that's the worst it can be for a student to think that she's in love with her headmaster, especially when he's not unattractive. Oh, but I don't believe you as attractive. No, it's deeper than that.
She gets over him real quick after she kind of he kind of puts her off. Lucky you didn't have to prove it. I don't have to prove anything. What she was trying to do. I don't know what I ever saw in you, but whatever it was, it's over. Uh, the National Guard shows up to help. Economy. The boys' school. They're toughing it out, you know, filling sandbags, digging your runoff channels. Girls are going to stay too, though. Any real danger? <laughs> Not if you had some real men who can handle a shovel. It ends with the girls the staying behind and they're going to do what they got to do to protect themselves and save the school. Pipe on the front porch. Okay. And I'll help you bail out the basement, okay, Mr. Kidd? There's a place you got to go for learning all you want to know about the facts of life. Episode 10. Adoption. <laughs> the project has been to do a family tree. Each you girl has to do. Today? I could give you an F. Okay, give me an F. I think this was a dumb project anyway. <laughs> Haven't y'all figured it out? This isn't my real family. I'm adopted. Blair says she can help find her real That's mother, father. Know. My mother's dating a judge who has access to everything. Blair, don't go butting in. You think you're such a big deal. Where would you be without your mother and her big sh Let's take a walk and rap a little, all right? Terrific news! The judge can get us the information we want. He's calling in an hour with the name of your real mother. But I don't know where your head was. Head will be on a platter if you get the home of that judge again. Well, now, she's figured this out already by herself. It's too late, Mrs. Garrett. What do you mean, it's too late? The judge will be calling here any minute. Yeah, and can the rest of us say, if we were up for grabs, we would have been chosen? I can only speak for myself. Yes. <laughs> well, that perhaps now isn't the time to seek the answers. If you want to find your natural mother, there'll be time for that when you've done a little more growing. So when the judge calls, Natalie decides hey, not to answer. How about everybody coming up to my room? We could finish some of Mom's seven layer cake. Episode 11, Running. And Mr. Bradley is proud of the good picture here, Molly. running trophy he's won the last two years because of Sue Ann's running. Accepting this trophy for Eastland is one of my proudest moments. But she doesn't want to run this year. I don't feel like training again four hours every day. And besides, I've got a bigger load this year. That's obvious. <laughs> So Cindy is going to run instead. All right, all right, all right, all right. Cindy it is. Yeah! Cindy's she ran apparently pretty good. Five minutes and three seconds. She broke my record? Without even breathing hard. She beat me by five seconds? You know, it's funny how things work out just right. I'm going to run in the race. But so Ann, you said you were going to help me win. You're doing a pretty good job of helping yourself. Wait a minute, Sue Ann. You said you Jealous. didn't Mr. Bradley, Cindy isn't running nearly as fast as you claimed she did the other day. Oh, really? Mm. I'm only human. My thumb may have jerked. I knew there was a jerk in there someplace. All this jealousy leads to fighting. Oh, Mr. Bradley, how do you like your friendly little competition now? trying to punch each other's lights out. Nobody had their lights punched out. Well, Blair certainly had one of hers dimmed a little. <laughs> Mr. Bradley, please pull both Cindy and Sue Ann out of the race. Yes? You call it winning to dump a close friendship for a race that's over in six minutes? Five minutes and three seconds. I'm only to knock five seconds off the old record. Five seconds? She's got a big I'll photo of the two of them. Two winners! There you are. Now, neither of you has to stand next to somebody she hates. Lesson learned. The two girls make up. All right. Smile. Please. No pictures. Episode 12, Molly's Holiday. Kansas City. Smell the wheat. Have a big stack of mom's pancakes.
cakes and go fishing with Dad down at Miller's Pond. It all sounds so wholesome, I can barf. Molly just Ooh. hung up on her dad. What is going on here? I hate him! First he moved down, then he sent for his clothes, and now they're getting a divorce and splitting me up between them. It's his turn to split staying married. Who taught you that? Your mommy and daddy? <laughs> That's right, Blair. It's 11 o'clock. Do you know where your mother is? <laughs> Snow John! Molly's gonna play sick to get Molly, pity from her parents, you both think of them. Dragging your mother up here to confront your father is such a terrific thing. She thinks that might do. get them back together. Well, she'll thank me when she and Dad get together again. But when Dad shows up, he has a girlfriend with him. We have a good time together today, just the three of us. And Molly's mother makes four. <laughs> Blair has a lot of experience with divorces. The and they'd argue. No, Her mother's been married three times. Two stepfathers. And all of them put together haven't given me as much love as your father's trying to give you right now. Hey, you know me. I don't envy anyone. But downstairs, when your father gave you that hug, well, I, got, I got kind of close. Of course, after pep talks from Mrs. Garrett and everybody else, they make up. Can I talk first? I did a real dumb thing. I called Mama, told her I was sick, and she'll be here any minute because I want you and her to get back together. But who would have figured out you bringing Angela? Episode 13, the last episode of season one. It's called Dope. Won't say anything. Blair got Sue Ann into some exclusive group. Two members of that group, including a young Hi, Helen Bates Hunt. Family. Hi, Mrs. Garrett. Are you sure we can't lure you over to our dorm? Really? We could use some young blood over there. <laughs> well. Dope is a reference to a joint. Meryl! Shh! Wanna? Do you smoke pot? No! But everyone in the group does. And you certainly are. They visit the group and they're already stoned. You guys have got some catching up to do. It's great to be part of the group. <laughs> Tootie kind of followed them there, and she managed to get in as well. And she found their bong. You put jelly beans in it. Oh, come on. Let's show her what it really does. Blair doesn't try it, but Sue Ann actually does. So I didn't do very well on her on her report. See, I told you she'd get a kick out of your joke. <laughs> Tootie and Allie bought some bongs to start their own club. Look here, bong, bong. She thinks it's for jelly beans. <laughs> The three girls were busted, expelled, so what are you keeping her? they searched Mad money. all the other girls' rooms, too. It's empty. Thankfully, that I joint that she had is gone. Left. <laughs> Me too. They're done with drugs. I can't believe I was stupid enough to smoke pot just to make them like me. Thanks for trying to pull me out of there. And thank you for trying to cover up for me with the lipstick. Uh, forgive me. I, I, I'm furious that these bright young girls should mess up their lives over dope. And if I ever catch any of you doing anything as stupid as that, I'm gonna... All right. Let's talk about The Facts of Life. It's a, movie, or a TV show that ran from 1979, I believe, through 1988. Does that sound right, I think? Um, this is obviously season one, and uh, it was um, half of a season. It started... Actually, this may have started in uh, January of... Uh, 1980. I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up. But anyway, who cares? Um, it was an abbreviated season, 13 episodes. That's the kind of way they used to do it back then. And um, season one features all of the main cast except Joe. Joe didn't appear till season two, I believe. But season one also had a bunch of other girls in it. Uh, Molly, Molly Ringwald, uh, Nancy, 
uh, Sue Ann, Cindy, and am I forgetting one? I don't think I am. In addition to, of course, Tootie, Blair, and Natalie. Um, also, Mrs. Garrett, who uh, came over from Different Strokes, was uh, um, she was supposed to be leaving the um, uh, the Drummonds in Different Strokes just temporarily until they got a new headmaster. They never really talked about it, though, other than the very first episode uh, when the... Um, uh, Drummond's appeared in that, uh, and she even said she was coming back, but, um, obviously we know she never did, so, but it hasn't been addressed yet that she's, she's going to be taking this over full time either, so, uh, we'll see if that is ever mentioned again, I don't know, I don't, have no idea, so, anyway, um, the show, uh, after, like I said, after season two, all those other girls left and Joe, Joe came on board. Um, it was, obviously it's a comedy, but it does delve into some serious matters too. The last episode there was marijuana. There's divorce going on here. There's all kinds of other things that playing in here and some real life drama mixed in with the, um, uh, fun parts. Uh, I do believe that, uh, the characters that they kept, Blair, Tootie, and uh, Natalie were the standouts of, of the, um, of the girls in this episode, so I'm or in this season, so that's probably wisely they kept the three of them and added Joe in later on. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. It was a popular show. I think it ran for nine seasons, and uh, I will hopefully be reviewing all nine at some point. I do have the box set that came um, from um, Shout Factory, but prior to that, I had picked up seasons one and two a long, long time ago, 10, 12 years ago or so. Uh, so that's what I'm holding right here. But I do have the box set that has all nine seasons in it, as well as two uh, reunion movies. But not the end. The last reunion they mo movie they did was called The Facts of Life Reunion, which came... Um, after the show was done, the two uh, extra bonus movies that are on the box set happened to come out during the run of the show. Uh, but the Facts of Life reunion, the TV movie, is not available on DVD in any form. Uh, I do have it on a VHS tape, though, so maybe I'll get to that at some point in the future. Who knows? But anyway, Facts of Life, Season 1, you can get this uh, by itself, or you can get this two-pack here with Seasons 1 and 2 on it, or you can get the Shout Factory box set, which, which will set you back uh, maybe about 80 bucks or so. Um, but yeah, it's a good show. I like it. I recommend it. Let me know what you think about it. I'm sure all of you have seen it. Interesting to note here, the uh, theme song, which we all know uh, very well, was different in Season Season one, and I play that for you at the beginning of each episode here. I think season two is when it starts with the regular theme song that we are very familiar with. But it's obviously very similar in season one, but different parts, different words to it here and there. And Charlotte Ray sings part of it as well. So different ending theme as well, uh, also featuring Charlotte Ray, I believe. So anyway, check it out. Let me know what you think about it. Leave some comments down below. It's called The Facts of Life. It's a good show. Watch it. Bye.